If the universe is infinite, does that mean somewhere else there exists a copy of the solar system, Earth, and even an exact copy of you, sitting in the same pose as you are, drinking the same tea and watching the same video, and there could even be an infinite number of these copies? Surely, you've heard of this idea. And it's quite popular in our culture. The idea is definitely very intriguing, but is there any justification for it? What does science say about this? The answer is not so simple, but today we'll try to figure it out, and even try to give approximate estimates of how far your nearest copy is, if it exists at all. As I explained in my video about end of the universe. Our universe has a flat geometry, meaning it is flat and infinite, and there is also the cosmological principle, which states, the universe has neither a center nor an edge, the center of the universe is everywhere, and the Big Bang happened everywhere. The universe on a large scale is homogeneous and isotropic, which means that if we take two large pieces of the universe, they will not differ much. And no matter which direction you look, you will see the same thing. Because of the cosmological principle, it seems to us that we are at the center of expansion, although in reality there is no center. The observable universe is a kind of bubble, a section of the universe with us at the center with a radius of approximately 46 and a half billion light years. We are certainly not at the center of the universe. It's just that the size of the bubble is determined by where the light has had time to reach us since the beginning of the universe 13.8 billion years ago. From other points, the light has not yet reached us due to the finite speed of light and the age of the universe. A careful listener might ask, why is the radius of the observable universe larger than the age of the universe multiplied by the speed of light? It's all because our universe is expanding. Here's a very vivid example with a bug running on a stretching rubber band. It will take him more time to reach the other end of the rubber band than if he were running on a static rubber band. Therefore, the radius of the observable universe is 46 and a half billion light years, not 13.8 billion light years. Beyond the observable universe, there are the same galaxies, stars, and planets as near us, according to the cosmological principle. We live in our bubble of the observable universe. The boundaries of our bubble are determined by the observers at its center. Outside it, there is simply even more of the same expanding universe. So there is the same universe with the same laws of physics and fundamental constants, with the same galaxies, stars, and planets. If beyond our observable universe, let's say, at a distance of a hundred billion light years from our horizon, there are particles of some other observer, then he will have his bubble. We seem to exist in the same space, but we exist so far apart that we have no way of interacting in any way. It's like we live in different universes. Here's the main question. Can our exact copy exist in such a universe? This question is answered by the Swedish cosmologist Max Tegmark in his article about the multiverse. Let's simplify our universe to the maximum, make it two-dimensional, and imagine that there are only four particles in it. For such a universe, there are 16 possible configurations of how these particles are arranged. If there are more than 16 universes in the multiverse, then beyond the configurations of particles will begin to repeat, and complete copies of the first universe will begin to appear. Now let's simply apply this analogy to our universe and apply the same logic to it. The only difference is that it's three-dimensional and there are a few more particles there. According to some estimates, in the observable universe, there are up to 10 to the power of 82 atoms, which is one followed by 82 zeros. The number of subatomic particles is estimated to be 10 to the power of 118 particles. To get a complete copy of our observable universe, such an unimaginable number of particles must have absolutely the same configuration and complete history of interactions from the very beginning of the universe for billions of years. Intuitively, this seems absolutely impossible. And yet, in theory, it is possible to calculate the number of possible configurations both for four and for such a number of particles, and then calculate what volume of space is needed for the configuration to start repeating. It is estimated that your identical copy should appear in the universe within 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 28 meters. This number has 10 to the power of 28 zeros, I ask you not even to try to imagine how huge this number is. Usually, when I talk about some huge number in my videos, to make it more visual, I give some example. 
The number of atoms on Earth, the number of stars in the universe, the number of atoms in the universe. But here it is impossible to find an analogy because all the most familiar numbers pale in comparison to this number. Perhaps some viewers would say that if this distance is converted into light years, or parsecs, then it won't be so scary, but it will only take 17 zeros from our number, while it has 10 to the power of 28 zeros, so nothing will change for perception. This is not the only way for your copy to exist. Theoretical physics offers two more possible options. Today, if you open almost any picture with the timeline of the Big Bang in the universe, you will see at the very beginning the stage of inflation. As of today, this is a fairly widely accepted concept that helps explain some observed properties of the universe and cosmological problems. The universe continues to expand to this day from its very beginning, but during the period of inflation, it expanded very rapidly. Inflation expanded the universe to gigantic scales in trillions and trillions of a second, smoothing out the structure of the fabric of space-time and laying the foundation for the formation of galaxies. The theory of inflation has resolved our most important questions about the universe, but at the same time, it has generated new problems. For example, how is it possible to synchronize the inflation process throughout the cosmos in such a short period of time since the cause and effect relationship was not observed here? Calculations have shown that the end of inflation should have been incredibly chaotic, whereas in some places inflation stops after a short burst. In others, it may continue. But the universe cannot turn into a complex soap bubble, otherwise, it would signify the demise of such an attractive theory. In the mid-70s, a new inflation theory was created. The second wave of thoughts proposed a solution in the form of the so-called inflaton, particles, the field of which permeated the early universe and which became the impetus for inflation. But along with the new particle, new universes began to appear. In some regions, the hypothetical inflationary field, which is responsible for inflation, weakens and the expansion slows down forming something like a bubble. Such a bubble is our universe. It continues to expand, albeit slower. Stars, galaxies, and so on are formed in it. And such a bubble itself is an infinitely expanding multiverse in which there are bubbles of observable universes, like the one in which we live. Each of the universes has its own unique set of physical constants and basic characteristics, intensity and nature of interactions particle mass, number of space-time dimensions, and so on. Physicists wondered what these other multiverses would look like and came to a clear conclusion. Practically all of them would be sterile, too primitive, and devoid of matter. In simpler terms, dead. In the vast sea of dead universes, there are tiny bubbles, few of which, by a fortunate coincidence, have acquired complexity, allowing the existence of matter and even life. And perhaps in one of these bubbles, Atoms have arranged themselves just like in our universe, and still, there exists our copy not only in our multiverse, but also in the multiverse of multiverses. And now we come to the most interesting theory, quantum mechanics. We're talking about the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics. Let's go step by step. Quantum mechanics is a very successful theory. It has been confirmed by experiments many times and has incredibly advanced humanity in scientific and technical progress, but it still has unresolved problems. One of the basic principles of quantum mechanics is superposition, which states that a quantum system can exist in multiple states simultaneously, and it only assumes one specific state when we perform a measurement. For example, an electron, until we look at it, exists in multiple possible positions. In the classical interpretation of quantum mechanics, also called the Copenhagen interpretation. Observation actually affects reality. Not everyone agrees with this because it sounds very strange and counterintuitive. So some scientists are proponents of the many worlds interpretation, according to which when a quantum measurement occurs, parallel universes arise, in each of which one of the possible outcomes of the measurement is possible. If we recall the famous thought experiment about Schrodinger's cat, I'll briefly remind you of it. In Schrodinger's thought experiment, a cat is placed in a closed container along with a vial of poison, which can be broken by a radioactive element with a half-life. According to the principles of quantum mechanics, until the container is opened by an observer, 
the cat is in a state of superposition, where it is simultaneously alive and dead until measurement. It turns out that in one world, the cat is dead, and in another world, the cat is alive. These two worlds objectively exist, but are not connected to each other. The many worlds interpretation sparks much debate in the scientific community. There are supporters and opponents of it, but undoubtedly the idea is interesting. And it offers the possibility of the existence of your copies on a completely different level. And now, the most interesting nuance of the many worlds interpretation. From the cat's point of view, the probability of it being alive is 100%. It will not end up in the world where it is dead because it cannot be aware of itself there. Since zero probabilities practically never occur in practice, subjectively the cat will live forever. There is a non-zero probability that the cat will survive if it is thrown out of an airplane, set on fire, shot. It will not die from illness or old age, even being at the epicenter of a nuclear explosion. There is a non-zero probability of survival, although it is infinitesimally small. This is called quantum immortality even if you are a supporter of the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics. I do not advise experimenting with yourself. If you suddenly find yourself the oldest person on the planet, perhaps then it's worth considering the correctness of the many worlds interpretation, but definitely not earlier. Honestly, most physicists treat this idea with cautious skepticism. If you want to help a young astrophysical channel, then subscribe, hit the notification bell, and give it a thumbs up.